The evolution of your marketing will be the catalyst for the evolution of your business. And the evolution of your business will provide you with the freedom to focus on the evolution of your life. This is Evolved Marketing with Andre and Brian. All right, welcome to another episode of the Evolved Marketing Podcast. My name is Brian Brewer, along with my co-host, Andre Germanchev, and a special guest today. So this special guest is really exciting for me for two reasons. First, this special guest came highly recommended from a past guest that we had. Uh, You may remember back from episode 10 of Evolved Marketing Podcast when we had Igor Kafetz on. Uh, That was a fantastic episode. Make sure you go ahead and check that out after you listen to this one in its entirety. Uh, Shortly after that, he introduced us uh, or made the introduction to today's guest, and I think it'll be a perfect fit for this podcast. The cool thing about this is not only does this guest have a lot of experience, and when I say a lot of experience, I don't mean a few years like some of our past guests or 11 years like myself. He's been in the game for 28 years, so I'm sure we're going to learn a lot about the evolution of marketing and affiliate marketing over the years. And that is exactly what he is. He has some really cool projects, which I'm sure we'll get into, including a newsletter uh, with 20,000 plus subscribers, but he is an affiliate marketer at heart. So without further ado, let's start the conversation here and welcome our featured guest, Itai Paz. Hi, thank you for having me. And thank you for the introduction. You made it just to the point, right? At the end of the day, I'm a I'm an affiliate marketer, like everyone else. Doesn't matter the number of years, I'm still an affiliate marketer. Yeah, well, thank you for joining today in the show. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here, and I want to get to know you a little better, you know, especially with your background. So before, like, twenty-eight plus years of experience, right? So before that, like, what was that something else that you had in plan of doing? So I, I didn't actually plan to do that. I was working, and I was laid off work. And I had to figure out what to do. It was many years ago, and it was a period of time that it was tough to find uh, jobs. I said, you know what? I really like the internet. Back then, we had uh, the connection. I don't know if you know, whomever listen knows about the the connection du- by dialing, where you have the noises, and, you, and no one can speak the phone while you're online. And it was really exciting. And I just said, I need to figure out how to do that. I'm not a programmer. I've never been. I'm more a marketer than than a programmer. Or well, I don't know code anyway. Today with ChatGPT, by the way, you can do and code, <laughs> but that's a different story. Uh, we'll talk about evolve and then what's going on with the market. But uh, I just had to figure it out, and I went online and, and I tried to figure out. I built a website with some kind of a tool. I, I didn't know any code, and joined some early affiliate programs that were just popping up. And the first month I was already making money. I said, oh, this is really cool. You can make money sitting at home doing, you know, just sitting in front of a computer. And I was so excited. So the second month I already built another two and then built more and more and more. And eventually I built a few hundreds of websites. And I do agree back then it was much easier in terms, right? Today, if you build a website, you're one of a billions. Back then it wasn't that. So you can actually get attraction pretty fast. So you, one would ask, is affiliate marketing or was affiliate marketing much easier back then? In one side, yes, because you could get traffic much easier. The other side, people didn't still know what's email marketing. There wasn't much knowledge. Like today, I can approach each one of you and get coaching, education, and learn how to do that. Back then, you need to figure it by yourself. So, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages to everything and over the years i've i had my own products because you know every, everyone here here's the thing uh they say the neighbor's grass is always greener or the next shiny object so you look and say oh this guy has a product let me have a product or i should have this and i should have that and everyone moves like an affiliate always look at the affiliate network and says oh they're making a lot of money without doing anything right they're sitting like that and the money yeah brian, i see brian is laughing so truly right you say they're doing nothing and and then uh, the affiliate network says, well, we're working hard. We need to recruit the affiliates. We need to maintain them and babysit them. And we have the software provider that actually runs our, our system. And he cuts a cut on everything we do without even doing anything, right? He just wrote the program. He doesn't do anything. So maybe he should be like a program writer. So every, everyone looks at other things. And over time, you know, I had the same scene of, looking all the time on different things. And we evolved over time. We started uh, going into conferences. I had my own products. I was uh, coaching, standing on stage, selling worldwide, 
uh, webinars. They did over 850 webinars. But looking at all the process, and I'm jumping all the way to today, my core uh, uh, essence and value and business is still affiliate marketing. I think it's one of the most beautiful thing. You send uh, and, and a person, okay, online, usually it's, well, I'm talking about online affiliate marketing, obviously, because there's also offline, but you send them to a company, to a business, and if they do the action that should be done, no, it could be sale, it could be filling a form, whatever it is, you get a small cut or you get a commission or whatever is fixed amount that is set. And that's really beautiful because this is when now people talking about the economy that might have issues and things like that, companies will might uh, lower their advertising costs or spend. But affiliate marketing is very easy because the company pays money usually out of money, right? I charge $100, so I give you 20 30 whatever it is. It's easy money, no risk for the company. The affiliate marketing business, that's the only reason that it kept on growing all through the years because it's a risk-free to the vendor. Is it risk-free to the user? To the, sorry, to the affiliate? So the risk is on the affiliate. What's the risk? The risk is you do the work or buy traffic, whatever it is, and if it's not converting, then... You don't get paid. That's that's the model. That's how it works. And I just love it. Now, going back a little bit in, through the story. So during these uh, the years, I did many things. In 2008 or something like that, I started building conferences for affiliates. I live in, in Tel Aviv, in Israel. Well, 20 minutes from Tel Aviv. But in Israel, 20 minutes, almost everything. And we said we're traveling. There are lots of affiliates in Israel, but we go outside to meet others. So why don't we have a conference? And we said with some friends and said, let's have it. Let's do one here. And they said, I said, are you in? They said, we're not in. So you do it. And I did it. And through the years, we did events. In 2020, we had to cancel all events due to COVID. Uh, the borders are clo were closed here. And you can't really do an international affiliate conference, a digital marketing conference, where <laughs> when you can't really get international audience. So and we it makes it, it makes years. it difficult when they uh they can't get across the borders to actually have an in-person <laughs> conference. Completely, completely. And that was actually in, in a year before that, I was closing, I was doing email marketing. We were sending like a million emails a day, and we shut down this business a year before the COVID hit. And I said, let's focus on the conference and build it, you know, grow it. And then everything like blew in our faces. Like it, everything was shut down, nothing to do. And I did the simple when it's always good when you are uh, you have a, um, a crisis, go to your roots, go to your basics. That's the simplest, simplest thing. And that's what we did. So we did went to two things. One, we went to, to email marketing. So we created the Morning Dough newsletter, uh, which for us is very simple. I read news, news every day about what's going on in the industry. It's good for me to know. I don't read... I have ADD. I don't read long emails and long articles, but I like to write the titles, right? Something happens. If it's really interesting, I'll read more. If it's really important, I'll read more. But it's good to like Amazon CEO uh, step down. You know, Jeff Bezos, it was a year ago or something like that. It's a good title, right? It's a good title to know even if we're in the business. Do you really need to know? Does it really affect us as, as a film? No, but it's good. We're in the industry. So I love to read the headlines. That's how we created the, the Morning Door, just out of me reading anyway the titles the, and just put them into email. And we have now over 20,000 uh, subscribers. And I went back, like I said, to my affiliate route, which is we started back to build websites with content and make money with affiliate programs, with advertising, AdSense, uh, video advertising, or whatever. Pure, simple thing and we started with one website a week and then two websites a week and then three and then we got to a period now we're in the pace of 200 a month plus we already have 2000 websites with us so we're building more and more and it's first it's so simple just because we're not stressed we're just building things the right way we're not playing games so the, the websites are based on obviously seo we don't buy traffic uh, the morning though is also based the 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 list is being built by whatever traffic comes organically or, or people refer people but if i go to the the website for us is seo neto 
you know, you, we just do SEO and clean SEO. We don't do tricks, sticks, you know, all the things that people. You're not doing the. You're not doing the black hat SEO. You're not doing, you know, trying no. to build illegitimate backlinks or trying to rank quickly necessarily, and then watch it all crash when something happens on Google. It just seems like a, a pretty, pretty well thought out, long term, safe model. What was interesting to me is as you were telling that story, you know, I can see how you've tried a multitude of things and how you got into your current uh, set of businesses, which is the conferences, um, which is the DM, DM, DMI Expo, uh, which we'll talk about probably, um, how you have over 2,000 websites and over 20,000 subscribers on your morning dough. Uh, and it's it's really interesting to me that you said, you know, when things crashed down, you kind of went back to your roots because the same thing happened to me. I had built a business. I got really big in 2016, 2017, tw late like 2018 and 2019. I kind of ruined everything by trying to do too many different new things. And then in 2020, uh, spent right around the time COVID hit, I went back to my affiliate marketing roots in the last couple of years have been fantastic by keeping it simple and, and sticking to what I know. So I want to talk about all that cool stuff you got going on, but I just, there's something in my mind that I, I got to know, like you're talking 28 years of experience, you know, dial up internet. I remember I'm 42 years old. That's how I was first introduced to the internet. Uh, you know, it was really cool when I went to college and, and we actually had like the, the wired LAN in there. So we could like download songs from Napster really quickly and burn them on CDs. Like that's kind of my you know, early introduction to the internet, but you're talking about building websites, doing affiliate marketing back in like 96, 97, maybe like, I'm curious, like, how did you get traffic back then? I mean, there was no social media. There was no TikToks. There was no, you know, YouTubes by any, any stretch of the imagination. Like, I understand that you can build a website, but like, how do you, how did you get traffic back then? I guess. Well, so back then there's what we, we weren't even called affiliate marketers, right? We were called webmasters. Uh, and I think Google, I don't remember when was Google started, but somewhere around, maybe just after that, right? Or around that. But yeah, I was there and there were others. So basically you would get traffic from search engines. Search engines, I don't want to say they were easy to fool, but they were easy to fool. Like it was, you put a content and you're there. It wasn't that complicated. And you can do duplicate content, which you cannot do or you shouldn't do today, which is the mob. You, you were able to get away with what's called today Black Hat. Well, back then it wasn't necessarily called Black Hat. It was just, you do whatever you want. There weren't any guidelines. You just build a website and that's it. And you write whatever you want and it, it works. That was pretty amazing. I'm telling you, it, it, it's like, I couldn't believe it myself. And I know it's tougher today, but back then that's how it was. And one of the reasons you, you went, we went through, you, we saw difficulties in SEO. It became harder and harder. And it's funny enough that after all these years, I went back to SEO and I'm doing the basic SEO, the clean SEO that you would do 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, or 28 years ago, if you did it the right way. So the basic still runs all the time. Same with things, you know, you both utilize email marketing for your businesses. And and of, of, obviously when you coach people, you, you teach them how to use email marketing. It didn't change anything. Like if if you ask, did, did email marketing change the 20 years, the past 10, 20 years? 28 years? I don't think so. It's the same thing. People say, do people don't read the emails? I'll tell you more. I have a question for you. I always do like a survey. Do you read your uh, spam box? Do you go over the spam box? I don't. Yourself? I, do no, I, don't, I don't either. I don't, I don't check the spam I, box. I do. I do. Many people actually do. And first of all, I always find something which is important that accidentally fell there. It, it happens because, you know, the... the that's maybe the change, but it didn't really affect. Everything works even with a spam box, but people go to spam box and actually read to find if something is missing. So even when someone is spamming or something is accidentally went there, many times people do open that. And that's what I love about everything. Everything still, the basics are the same. That's why you, when you said, are you, are you happy to hear that I went to the basic? Because it works. It's like, let's say you build a company and you're selling lots of things and you, and shit happens. You go to the basic and start selling the only product that works for you in the past, unless it's gone, but let's say it's still there, and you'll succeed, right? You'll go back and then you grow again. It's the same thing. So traffic was very easy back then. Today, I don't think it's it's tougher. I'm just saying you need to do it more organized, more clean. Don't play games and don't do things that you shouldn't. Yeah. 
So going back to the website, um, you of course had affiliate links inside those websites, correct? correct. Um, what were like the main products that you were promoting? So I promoted everything you can ever think about other than adult which i don't have any by the way any problem with people promoting adult content that's okay uh, it's a legit and legal as long as it's the legal content that's okay but i was uh, promoting anything so uh, uh back then you can actually market everything from toys and t-shirts and and um, I know there was a uh, prescription medication stores and you would market uh, online uh, games and online casinos and whatever you wanted, you could. And I actually market, like I said, most of the things other than uh, adult and there's no limit of what you can do. And most, when you think about it, your audience, yeah, you bring someone, he can buy whatever is the topic of, but he usually can buy other things as well. So I'm not recommending if your website is all about games, I wouldn't say, hey, put diapers, right? If he's a dad, you the conversion be, will be low. But you should think about ways actually to get more uh, relevant products for him. And I'm jumping ahead. You, when you asked about traffic earlier, uh, we see a lot also in email marketing, but that can be done also in websites, cooperation between other people. So if I'm doing, I'm teaching email marketing, you're teaching, uh, uh, let's say, SEO. So saying, hey, guys, you know, I always say you, Email marketing is the most important, but you have a website where you opt in people. It's very important also to know how to optimize the page so you can also get traffic. And here, go to uh, this guy and learn from him. And the other guy does the same thing, the opposite side. If you go to the website, it works as well, right? You can, if I have a website for games, I can find someone either than have different games, different approach that we can actually. So let's say I review games and he's actually playing games. So I, we can promote each other. It doesn't really collage. We get more traffic altogether. We get more subscribers. People think, oh, we're competitors. You know what? It'll... <laughs> There's so many people. If you say that each one of them is competitor, then you're like in the, what you call Red, Red Sea or whatever you call it, Red Ocean. It's a never ending. You need to, I think one of the keys, affiliate marketers, actually connect to other people and do what we call JV, J, joint venture. It doesn't need to be uh, a monetary exchange but it can be really valuable when you just cooperate with other share information share traffic share recommendations it's, it's powerful yeah you know it's important awesome. to remember you know and i talk about this a lot with with the people that i educate you know either just on youtube or in my facebook group or through content or even the people who you know jump into some of my courses and in, in, in actual coaching programs is it's not like there's people sitting here with a hundred dollar bill and they have to decide, okay, where am I going to spend this hundred dollar bill? No, it, it they buyers will buy. So if they buy from you, they might buy from you know Itai, they might buy from uh, Andre. You know, it, it's it's okay to share traffic. And it was really interesting the last you know three or four minutes of what you're talking about is I think it can really open up the ideas of alternate ways to get traffic other than just making a TikTok, just making a YouTube video. And driving people directly to your list because the more relationships you build, the more opportunities um, that you can create for yourself. So, if I'm looking at your business, you know, I see the conferences um, that you run, which I'm sure drives traffic to uh, your Morning Dough newsletter, which is over 20,000 subscribers, either directly or indirectly. Uh, I think we all know here that hopefully for you, this podcast will bring people to your Morning Dough newsletter, either directly or indirectly. My question is about the websites that you build, because when you say you're building about 200 websites a month, I think you said, what oh, model yes. do you use for that? I'm not talking about individual products, but I'm thinking more of the model. Are you building websites that will rank in order to drive people to your newsletter so you can market to them later? Or are you building websites that direct people into products with affiliate links on the website? Or is it some combination of those things? Thank you for the question. Usually there should be like, it's nice to have synergy. Like I said, Morning Dough and DM Expo, there's some synergy. These websites are completely separate business, we can call it. It's still me, but separate business. Um, it's not driving any traffic to the other two operations. It's simple uh, content, and then we get uh, commissions or advertising, uh, ref share, whatever it is from Google or from affiliate programs for sending traffic 
to them by clicking or there's CPM, like, you know, just views, et cetera, clicks, all the models that's relevant to affiliates. And uh, they're standalone. Each one of them, by the way, is a standalone website. They're not connected in any way. So I mentioned 2000 websites and we mentioned playing with Google and doing all kinds of trick and sticks. We don't do that. We actually tell Google, here are the websites. He knows every one of them is mine. I'm not hiding anything because the people who try to hide, when you start to hide, Google is looking for you. And it sounds really stupid, but I'm telling you, I know companies that had 20,000 websites, 30,000 websites, and try to hide it with uh, all kinds of different servers and getting into with VPNs. And Google caught them and just killed their website. Killed meaning dropped their ranking or index, whatever it is. So we say to Google from day one, it's very easy, but the success of this operation, what I'm building, and now we're, we're aiming to, to get to 30,000 websites, maybe even more, is that we focus on a specific, what we, we can call long tail, but a specific question or specific thing that the user is looking. We're not trying to catch everything altogether. Many people write a page and trying, oh, we'll put this keyword and this keyword and this keyword, and we'll have a density, whatever it is. We're using only one, not like one key phrase, right? It's good to be a key phrase, long tail for all the pages. So one page always is focused on only one thing. Would we get less traffic because we're not like focusing, let's say, let's go on, um, I don't know, online toy or toys, buy toys. So if I do a website for buy toys for kids under four, uh, from uh, wood, whatever it is. So yeah, I'll get much less traffic for sure, but the, it's very targeted and the chances for me to be ranking high to much bigger than someone that mentioned there's wood, plastic, whatever, because it wants to catch everyone. I prefer to go this route and that's why we build multiple websites. It's called, I, well, I call it the micro, uh, micro sites. Okay, so we're not looking to get well, obviously, I would love to have uh, one million visitors in one website. It's not about that, and it's not. A, I, you can call it we're working under the radar, but we're not going under the radar of search engines because we're not hiding anything. It's actually going under the radar of other marketers because a marketer usually looks what's going on in the market and tries to, oh, this is what they do, and let's do something like that. When it sees a website that has maybe I don't know, have a website with. 3,000 visitors a month. So it's about, what, 100 a day? That makes about $400 a day. Sorry, a month, $400. So you, you say, okay, well, I prefer to mimic someone who does million visitors, right? We search for the millions. But this website is stable every month, 400. Now multiply it, and not all the websites are doing, we're building them. But I'm just saying, over time, our goal is to get all the websites to get to two, three, four, or 500 dollars a month, multiply it by many websites which are under the radar of people looking to mimic you, it's much easier. You're under, you know, no one is focusing on you. And, you know, we're not hiding anything. Like I said, you can find us online if you want to search. That's okay. But it's um, much uh, simple and calmer. You know, we're less stressed building yes. it this way. So essentially, every website that you're putting out there is basically like a mini ad for, and then you let it do its thing, basically, right? Correct. So. At that at that point after that, how do you build your email list? You know, just putting out those websites. Do they go? Do they have to opt in at some point, or do you ever have to offer like the same type of products to the the same type of website that they bought from? Or how does that work? So so far until today, we haven't implemented in, implemented email marketing into this website, and I'll tell you why. Maybe it was a, I don't want to say a mistake, but. Part of the things you build, we build a process. I I call it what I call it, the, the, the factory. It's funny, I call it the factory. So when you build a factory, let's say I build a website today, it won't get any traffic in the next couple of months or three months. So maybe even six months, maybe even 10 months. So now putting an email marketing, connected it to all kinds of systems, it's a waste of time because at the same time, I, need, I can actually build more websites. When it gets traffic, then I'll go back and do that. So now that we're, getting enough traffic, uh, we, we're implementing it. Did we make a mistake or not by not doing it day one? You know, no one knows. There's no like right or wrong, but we do understand um, it's not that complicated to implement it because using one system, you you inject all of them. 
depending on the topics, right? So let's say I have uh, a group of websites that are on health, a group of websites that's on different things. So you want to have different lists in that sense. What I'm looking for, there's two options. Either I can start writing emails, series of emails and send them to different offers, or I can find a JV who has a, who is willing to give him, me his opt-in box for health. And then people opt into his list and either I get paid for the opt-in or I get a ref share, which is an option as well. So we're looking into this model. If you look at the morning dough, by the way, the morning dough is has content. So it's all about SEO as well. We built content, we wrote the content and the subscribers, it, when you click on, uh, when you get to the website, either you opt in or you get a, you know, a pop says, hey, opt in and people just opt into the list. Some people get referrals, but the idea is uh, the, the email marketing, that's the business. So morning though, the business is email marketing. Here it's just uh, in this website, it's just part of the uh, business model of, or the revenue model. Like, like a them. blogging, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's interesting, kind of a point that you made that you didn't necessarily say is important to know, especially for people who are getting started with uh, any business. It doesn't matter if it's affiliate marketing or anything else. You know, you go out there on the internet and you're like, I want to start a business. And what you, what's going to happen? You're going to be inundated with a bunch of information. You're going to be inundated from a, with a bunch of messages from different marketers who all want you to go do their things. So you buy their stuff. And it just can be really overwhelming. You already mentioned it earlier in this podcast, Shiny Object kicks in. And that's a real struggle uh, for a lot of n- people who are new to this game. But what you're saying here and, and reminding us all is it's really important to understand the game that you're playing. If you're playing the build the website game, then build the websites. If you're playing the email marketing game, then focus on the email marketing. Now, one thing that that I kind of want to talk about because you've been in this business for so long, you started when when traffic was quote unquote easy. Now maybe it's a little bit more difficult because there's so many people, there's so much more competition. But you also started at a time where no one really knew anything about the internet and maybe buying on the internet was a little bit more risky than it is now, certainly more risky than it is now. Uh, so people are more apprehensive to do so. So maybe if you could just give any insight, if you have any, into how the buying process for customers has evolved over the years, whether it's harder to get people to buy, easier to get people to buy once you have their attention. Anything you could you could tell us about the buying process that people go through would be extremely interesting if you have any insight. First of all, I'll go to Dan. Dan says people are more likely to buy today than before. First of all, does the credit cards are all insured? So if there's an issue, you're always insured if someone is actually, um, you know, it's a fraud or something like that. And the and the American system is even easier in that sense than the worldwide. You can actually go to a phone and charge back with one push of a button. So it's very easy. I th- Amazon made it super easy to buy. It's like. You don't even need to, you know, you can just click on that and boom, it's it's at the door in an hour. So it's actually much easier. People buy more. I think um, what affects people today, that's my opinion, on the buying process, uh, obviously, is information they're actually getting. So my wife, actually, a few days ago, I have some last man, and she sent me some kind of a page with explanation about this, especially inhaler, not medical. And you look at it. And it felt like I don't want to say sleazy, um, salesy, like like the shopping network thing, like buy three, buy. And I said, listen, this is. I know she she's trying to help help me with my asthma, but it looks pretty sl- slimy. I wouldn't buy there, even if it was forty dollars. I wouldn't buy that. I think there's lots of things you're looking for reassurance about what it is, and. Many marketers are overselling. I'm not saying you don't need to sell. Even when you do a video, right? You do video and and, and you sell on stage, you sell on webinars. That's, you, it's great to do. And there's lots of techniques. Utilize them online on, on the page. But you need to understand the, 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 the buyer, if you try to oversell him, eventually he will charge back or, or refund. And if you're an affiliate, uh, think about it. If you work with vendors, you send traffic to somewhere that might convert. You know, I think one of the, and it was back in the days where you sent people to buy, uh, make money online products, like pure ones, you know, the, what they call BZOPs, right? This fast BZOPs. And easy sales, $100, $50, $100. And then 
after 60 days, you suddenly see that people are having money back guarantee with the vendors, right? Not with you. You're an affiliate and you start to see your commission goes down back minus, 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 minus. So it, it's, it's easy to sell, but it's easy to convince people to buy. But when you do promote products, look at it in your eyes. Would you buy it yourself? Don't think you'll make money. Short term won't work because it will blast in your face. You have to make sure that uh, it, it makes sense. Treat the traffic that comes to your page like it's your family coming or you, and you don't want to be sleazy. You don't want to make money over their head just because you can and it doesn't make sense. It won't work for the long term. So, you know, even Google today knows about your website and what's going on because they're fishing it through, obviously, legally. They're collecting the information, your behavior through your browser or other user browsers. So if people go to your website and people can complain today about websites, there's so many things that can be done. So you need to treat the, 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 the audience that's coming and go to buy in the best way. Be If you provide information review about the product, be genuine. Most people write review that even they didn't even see the product. They get a text and maybe copy paste it. I'm just saying it's 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 an issue. You need to think about long term. I think affiliate marketing is a long term game, and I'm not saying because it takes a lot of time to make money. I'm saying if you need to be in, in there for long term, it's not like oh one shot and you're there and, and and you're done. And it's also connecting. And if you don't mind, I'll jump for a second. So one when I was doing coaching, and you you both are doing you have amazing programs. I was really offended by clients. They would buy the product. They would not do anything. And then they come to a call and say, what else can we do? And I said, what the F? You didn't do anything. So it's like, you, I'm, I'm telling you, Phyllis, if you go into a coaching program, if you buy something that's going to teach you, follow through the process, go all the way. Don't think, oh, I'll come and it will happen. You need to work. Nothing will happen if you don't put the work. Clients won't happen. You want to make money. It doesn't make sense. Sorry for jumping something else. It's just, it was burning in my head just suddenly to say it's important for people to follow up through the program. If you build a website, don't say, oh, I'll do one page, two web pages a month, and that's it. You need to build a process. And spend it. Be authentic. Write the content. Follow through the process. Any process. If they go to your programs and you tell them, here's the process, do the process. Don't don't cheat. Don't don't look for shortcuts. It's good to find shortcuts. Long and wrong. I love shortcuts. You know, like ChatGPT. We can talk about it if you want later. But I'm just saying, in the you begin. Start with the process that works. Don't try to to invent the wheel. Yeah, and it comes down to the shiny object syndrome too. Like some people start a program and before they even finish that program, they're already buying the next program and then they're just more confused than they were in the beginning, right? Or so a totally mistake. Yeah, and I feel like I've fallen for that too, right? Like I started a program and then I went to the next one and then the next one and at the, at the end of the day, I was more confused than anything. So um, you mentioned something interesting uh, when you were doing uh, live events, right? But then COVID hit, and everything basically went to crap, basically. I mean, for, I don't know, a year and a half. Um, did you have to change your whole system to like virtual events after that? So here's the thing. Um, our conference, the, the DMI Expo, is a live conference. People are coming, uh, or physical conference. People are coming for an expo and networking and learn on the stage, or sessions on the stage. And I have, uh, uh, like, you... I have many friends in the industry and some of them own different conferences worldwide and some of them tried the online right away. I and, and they said it wasn't worth to do unless you want to do branding. Why? Because let's say, you know what? I'm bringing online to my conference, which I can't really bring to Israel, Bill Gates. Let's say Bill Gates is relevant, right? Okay. That's nice, but you can go to YouTube or zillions of other websites and hear Bill Gates saying whatever he wants, what, the same concept right now. It's not like you're on stage. It's like exciting, right? I'm sitting and I'm seeing. It's online. I can see him on any video on YouTube, whatever it is. So you see people less come for co for sessions, which were on some kind of a Zoom or go to webinar. There weren't any people, very little. And then networking, it's really hard to do networking online. How do you really do that we, in a software? 
So people, all of them need to come in a certain time. It doesn't really, doesn't really work like in one room. And so uh, people don't want to buy, buy tickets, right? Because I can see the speaker somewhere else. Sponsors don't want to pay because they're, how do they find actually the others? So maybe for branding a little bit. So we found out that this model doesn't really work for us. We actually stopped everything. It made sense for us and utilize the time to do other things. Um, and if you look back, if we would we do it differently? I don't think so. It was a smart move not to do online. And don't get me wrong, I already done like eight or 900 webinars over time, like the past before, but what we call it BC, before COVID, okay? So we did lots of webinars regard, you know, in with our products and all the things we've done, and it's an amazing tool. I'm all for people to utilize webinars. It's powerful. It's really powerful to to give you a message. People can see who you are. You're authentic uh, because online, otherwise it's video and text, right? But here it's more authentic. Uh, but for conferences, it really didn't work uh, online to anyone. And I didn't want to waste my time and money. What would you say, because you have the experience, to anyone who is getting into any sort of online industry or marketing industry, and they're considering going to a conference? I know you already mentioned there's the networking aspect of it, but what other things can, or what other benefits can they get by attending these in-person conferences? Do you see any transformations from some of the attendees that stick out in your mind? So first of all, you... You know, if you look at, if people look at the three backgrounds of where we are, we all sit in a home office, which is, by the way, exciting. But at the end of the day, at the same time, we have kids, we have families. So we're in a surrounding, certain surrounding. Some people also work and affiliates, okay? I'm not saying everyone doing it 100% of their time. So going to a conference takes you to a different environment. You don't have on your heads nothing. You don't need to take the kids for school or the pet to the vet. You're all there. I, I, I was in Las Vegas 10 days ago in a conference. Just stepping out of Israel, going to a conference, suddenly my mind goes into a different set of thinking. Uh, it's clear I was able to take my business. Before I, even the event began, I already could have gone home and I made my uh, my, my money back from just being there because... I, I was thinking differently. I spoke to a friend that already came two days early. So just before the event, I was already able to 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 go to the bank and say, okay, I'm good. Let's go home. Nevertheless, when I go there, first of all, you see new programs, you see people, technologies, ideas. You get open. Your mind is open. Maybe someone didn't hear about, um, I don't know, uh, let's say email marketing, for example, or whatever, chat GPT or whatever. There were so many opportunities verticals that you can learn by there meet people i always tell by the way that's a good trick also a trick it's not a trick but it's a good thing um so at the end of the day, business is not done by businesses it's done between people right you mentioned it right people someone has the, the, the bill it's a person so i love to connect to affiliate program managers affiliate managers why because if you have good relationship with your affiliate manager they have ability to give you advantage. Sometimes they have special offers that they can only give to their friends or the better affiliates. So you can get it suddenly because you have a better relationship with them. It's, it's something you build. So uh, it, it took me many years and I'm still investing in that because the personal relationship, you know, oh, we have something new. Do you want to be the first one or the, one of the first one to test it or to utilize it? Or we can give you a higher commission. That's all about relationships. So that's, a, I, why, the, that's why I call it the, hack it, well it's a hack it's not a trick it's a hack just connect to the affiliate program manager affiliate manager it, it can always be beneficial sessions i'm not a good you know like i said add sitting in long sessions some sessions are great you just need to decide whatever is best in i, I love to go to the more specific than the hype sessions because hearing about hype that's fine that's okay about the industry I prefer doing networking at the same time. But if someone is actually talking email marketing, SEO, which is my forte, I always love to listen because if they tell you even one thing, one small thing can change your business. And more than that, sometimes I hear people talking about the core because it's a general conference, right? So sometimes don't go to the advanced stuff. Even talk about the basic and tell yourself, 
oh shit, what, 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 why don't I do that? Because you're so focused on advanced and bigger, that simple things that might, might, you might have forgot. So it's cool. So I see benefits of seeing people, learning, connecting, whatever it is. It's super beneficial. It could be any conference that related to your niche, to your vertical. Um, you go to conferences, you both of you. It's amazing. I totally recommend at least once a year to do that. Yeah, and it's amazing about the connections that you can make with people, right? Me and Brian, that's how we met in person at a conference, right? So we knew each other from online world space, but then the first time we actually connected was in person, and we got along even way, way better than before, you get me? And then we started doing our own projects, we started doing this podcast, now we have guests coming into the podcast, and now we are making more connections even with this amazing platform too. So that's super interesting that you say that as well. That's, I think you summarized it better than I could have summarized it, uh, correct? Yeah, that's a lot of fun. So you've mentioned ChatGPT a couple of times. Um, you know, for, for those who don't know, I think it, it's pretty relevant in the news and, and omnipresent online now. But ChatGPT, you know, for the lack of a better term, it, it's artificial intelligence. And maybe that's the best way to describe it, where you can send it cues and it'll write things for you. It can... It'll help you program. It can help you write video sales letters. It can help you write emails. We did a podcast email notification. Uh, every week we we let our list know that there's a new episode out. And I used Chad GPT to write the notification for, I think it was an episode, two episodes ago. And I said, Chad GPT, please write an email that I can send to my list to let them know about a new podcast that just came out. And it wrote it out. And it gave me new ideas. I was like, oh, yeah, why am I not sending people to my Instagram in the footer? Like, that's crazy. Of course, I should be doing that. Um, so it's, it's an amazing tool. Do you use ChatGPT at all for these websites that you're creating? And if so, how? And if not, what are you using it for? So ChatGPT is pretty new. And I think uh, if you look in the, at least what I see here, there are two big aspects that people are talking about. One is the education part which is schools, kids, universities, that people say, oh, so now they don't need to write an article or an essay, whatever it is. It just asks ChatGPT. By the way, they tested, it's a small test in, in Israel. They show it on the news. They took 20 students, uh, and for them, they actually told them you need to bring the answer from ChatGPT. And 16 were needed to sit down and write the answers for the test with Google, uh, um, you know, searching for the answer like we did before, and then write it. And this, and, and they submitted to, to, te to teachers. Each one of them got eight and two, so eight of uh, what you call it, the Google way and the Chat GPT. And one teacher didn't find the two; he actually thought there were students. And the other one uh, uh, caught one of the uh, GPT, and the other one he gave a hundred because he thought the student was doing a great job. So. Uh, uh, while the education system is really fear of that, I'm just saying, and where it connects to what we do, if you use it for good, that's great. You mentioned earlier you can write codes, right? You can write codes and everything. Even knowing how to go to ChatGPT and ask for what you need, the code, understanding the code it gives you and implementing what you need takes you to the next level. So it's not like, oh, we'll, we'll become stupid, right? Because... ChatGPT writes us everything. It doesn't write everything. You need to be smarter to know what to ask, to understand what it gives you, and how to utilize it next. So it's not just copy paste to anything. And that goes to people who are saying, "Okay, why well, should let's write content? We don't need to write content, right? Let's ask ChatGPT." And will will Google say, uh, you know, they said it's a red flag or red alert, or whatever? It's a threat to the company. Uh, is it, I'm not a big, you know, looking for what will happen to Google and probably like Facebook, Google and like, yeah, everyone eventually over time will find other companies maybe in 20 years. But the thing is you can utilize, you said how you use it. Like I need to write an email series. I can use it. Although by the way, on email marketing, the trick I use for email marketing is I actually write the way I speak. Very simple. Why? Because when I meet the people or they see me on webinars or see my video, they think, oh, we know this guy because they read my email and they see I speak the same way. It's the same um, language, right? It's Obviously, congruent. It's English, but it, yeah. Uh, but if you write it 
like a salesy email or you get chat GPT to write and then you speak it's a different person there's like you lose a connection type of thing right yeah so I wouldn't use to that but like you said hey just write there's a new podcast that's great so uh, my uh, one of the, the team members said hey you can help me I just need to write to an employee that it's not relevant so it's you know that we don't need him right now we're going with someone else so I just went uh, to chat GPT I wrote it and I copy paste it And have the screenshot so he laughed back he said I, why did I ask you I could have done it myself so it can save lots of time in small things when you're looking I'm actually still learning that chat GPT I was sitting for a few hours and I know many people define how far you can stretch it and I actually asking question and I see the answers and then I say oh I ask a question and then it says oh we don't know so I ask him you know um, can you tell me about this person it gave me like a nice text about it and said you Can you tell me his net worth? We cannot say that. Do you know if he's uh, uh, Christian or Jewish? We don't get it. We don't have information. Do you know where he lives? No, I, we don't give it. So you start to, to test what can you do. I asked what his website. They gave me his website. This is my work. Does he have more websites? Suddenly he says, oh, there's two more that are his businesses. So you try to find out what's the perimeter. You can actually work with it. I think ChatGPT will change so many times again and again and again. And so I haven't utilized it to my websites yet. And I don't think even that because that we utilize it, maybe here and there, we'll use it for a small paragraph here and there. But for the core thing, I prefer, and I, I, I write most of it uh, to be more um, clean, very simple, and we're not fluffing or nothing. And that's a simple thing. I'm not saying it wouldn't change. I'm not saying people shouldn't use it. I'm just saying don't copy paste like uh, you know it, 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 the peop- we say garbage in garbage out. Don't do that. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean it's a, it's a good tool I guess you can use to you know perfect the skills that you already have, right? So I think Absolutely. I've been using a couple for a little bit, but I mean, it has helped me like do some introductions for like a course or the stuff like that, but you still have to tweak it. It's not gonna be perfect every single time it gives you the answer. Um, you mentioned you keep talking a lot about websites and it, that really intrigues me because the way me and Brian uh, promote our stuff as affiliates, we like to create short form videos, right? So we use TikTok, we use Instagram. And there's a lot of people in our audience that I'm sure they're really afraid to be on camera, you know, for the first time. So you just talking so much about websites, you know, that's another opportunity that those people have instead of not doing nothing about it and not jumping on, on promoting that way. They have other possibilities to promote and that's by building websites as well and promoting their affiliate links um is there like a framework or like how how did, were you able to actually learn how to like create like a a nice website with affiliate links and put it out there and make sure it starts ranking is there like a framework that you use for that so first of all I want to go to the beginning of the question so you mentioned like TikTok and all this stuff I would say always do you What you like to do some people like to write right if you like to do videos do videos if you're shy and you don't want to do TikTok whatever it is don't do that because people will see that and you know I I've done before when we're doing coaching I did you know well there wasn't TikTok back then but we we're doing like videos and you know what it wasn't I didn't feel it, it it's me so eventually I I, I just stepped away off that so I I would say you Give your audience, you know, if you're affiliates or your clients, utilize whatever you tell them to do. Look at all the options, try them. You can't say no before you even do the first video, right? I have, you know, we can speak very, very easily. If you now go with me to the room and put the camera in front of my face and ask to talk to the camera, I, I will start to blab. That's me. And some people, like you said, camera shy, whatever it is. It happened. I know we were doing videos for launches. We were doing like, I've done maybe 100 launches over time. And there were so many editing, you know, we were doing like the format where you cut all kinds of pieces of the videos and do, and it was a lot of work just because I wasn't fluent. Not because my English is not good. I hopefully my English is, is okay. But because I, I was stuck. I was stuck because I'm, I'm camera shy in that sense. So going to that, I would say again, just choose whatever works for you. But try before you say no I don't want to do it it could work for you as for going to the website if you are you asking more on the technical side of the framework of the website or the topic or how do you what what yeah, like, about 
like for example some people will get on camera like like myself like brian but then somebody that will not touch it most likely that person that, uh, gives up or stops learning about the business model because they don't know any other ways to promote basically because that's all we do we just there you see our videos every single day right so how would a person go about to just go into like blogging and, and creating that website you know because i know you say it was easy back then and now it's a little difficult it's, it's, there's a lot more people doing okay. it so how can okay. they even start so I, learning okay i'll go for that and then again i'll talk about you so i mentioned so i did find that one of the tricks to actually overcome that is conversation so i can uh, ask my wife hey let's say she's a creative of course or someone in the industry and I say hey would you mind interview me just interview me. So when we speak like that and we record that, I don't see the camera. I don't speak to other people. I It's just conversation between two people, right? You record it and here's the video. It's okay. We even had, I've even created a show. Like we had the, like a show. We had a table with experts and we were talking and the camera, I loved it. In the same room, by the way, we were in the same room. Uh, it was like 10 years ago. It cuts the issue of having the camera, right? When you when there are two more than one people, it reduces the stress. So that's also an idea. It doesn't need to be an expert. It could be someone that just helps you uh, go and deliver the content you actually want. Now, as for the actual website, so uh, let's go to the mechanics, okay? The simplest way to build a website today is WordPress. That's obviously WordPress, it's free. You just go and build it. How do you do it technically? I'll be honest with you. If you ask me how to do that, I don't know how to do that. I really don't know. In the past, I built it HTML. I'm going to talk about 20 years, eight years ago. Now I have someone that works with me and he does it. And by the way, I have one person that works with me for the past uh, 15 years. And he does all the technical thing. I know what I'm not good at. And he does it. And he also knows marketing. So when I travel to conferences, if there's something, even a webinar needs to be done, he knows how to do that, which is awesome. So I think if you look at you guys as working together as well, I'm sure if one of you wasn't here, the other one can like excel that for sure. And it's good that you can be together, but you, but separate you, the business still keeps on running, which is amazing. And so, but still we work WordPress, it's free. We work simple, so people look for fancy template. The, their focus on, I remember the first websites always, you want to have it, the perfect website, right? The perfect website, so there's no perfect anyway, no ever, whatever it is. So just build it and start rolling, changing the colors, having more logos, whatever it is, you can do it over time. Just start to move it. Also, be consistent. So I mentioned, like, if you do, like, once a week, that's okay. If you Even in email marketing, I always tell to people, you send an email, tell, when someone opt in, tell them how many times they should be expecting to get an email, and then stand by it. Because some people send the emails once a month, and then suddenly they have a promotion, and now they're sending 20 emails a day. So automatically, someone says, spam, he doesn't even remember that he's opting to this list that he gets once a week or once a month. So you have to be consistent the same way you do an email, also in the website. Google also looks at that. So I don't know if people know, Google goes to your website on a regular basis. There are resources that he allocates to different websites. Uh, some websites you visit it all the time. Like if you go to Financial Times or whatever, Yahoo Finance, it goes all the time because information keeps on updating. If your website is static, it will come maybe once a month and get, and get information. So the more updates you do, Google will come and visit you more and more and eventually might even send you more traffic. Now, it, that, don't stress yourself. So Itai says you have to have every minute or every day an article. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, be you say, okay, once a week I'll upload something, upload. It doesn't have to be, some people stress about the blog post. Oh, how many words? What's the density? What so what happens if I take a post and say, hi, uh, just a post that's saying uh, about this podcast, right? When I go and do a, a blog post about this podcast, it's not going to be 3,000 keywords, density, whatever it is. Just authentic and talk to your audience. Not everything needs to be like perfect pitch or whatever it is. We had a webinar. Uh, this is what we talked about. It was cool. Go check. Here's the link. Have an image or maybe cut off the video or embed the video inside. And that's it. You can have, not everything is about what you write. You can have 
the morning dough itself is built on other people's content. We don't write even one piece of content. Everything is is done by others. We just curate information uh, we, we, and, and then we deliver it in a, in a more clear way. So don't stress yourself. It's all about just write the content, build a simple website. And as you start to get, uh, you know, the muscle of, of knowing how to do that, you start to get traffic, you start to get uh, some money. You know, if you don't want to do it, have someone to do it for you. But you need to spend money. Obviously, if you need someone to do it, do it. Can you take someone in Fiverr for five bucks to install you the WordPress and do it for you? You can do that. It's a simple task. Don't be afraid. If it's something big, uh, I wouldn't go to five dollars to something big. But we're talking about, like you said, the beginning, right? Just start. It's it, don't stress yourself. People are stressed too much. The fact that people are still reading. You know how many people are what you call wannabes? So they go from conference to conference, buying product to product. They're going to more webinars. They read more, but they haven't done anything. But if you ask them, they would say we're not the beginners. We are like intermediate because they feel like they've, they know a lot. But, uh, and hopefully, you know, I said shit a few times, hopefully it's okay to say, but they know shit, right? Because if you haven't actually implemented anything, it doesn't really matter. It's better to start and fail a few times and improve it and do another one, another one, versus try to, to wait for the perfect thing or the perfect, there's no perfect thing, never, ever. It's easy to invest money, right? But it's hard to actually take action and implement it in one while you're learning, basically. So that information is only valuable if you are acting on it, basically. Yes, and all you need to do once you start the blog, you submit it to Google, and that's it. We don't do anything more than that. We're not actively, well, obviously, if you, if you, you can, depending on the type of, of website, but the 2000 website, we don't promote them. Google just starts to scan the website, and you know, starts to show it on the search engine index. You get some results, and over time, you know, you start to see dripping of traffic and goes up and up and up. Some websites don't work. It happens. We dropped some website that didn't work for a year, and that's it. We start a new one. Very simple. You know, I want to just really highlight some really good advice that you've now given twice in two different ways, and I just want to highlight this for the listener. Previously, we were talking about writing emails, and you mentioned the best thing is to write emails in my voice. Now. You're talking about writing blog posts and we're talking about having a, a, a consistent voice. And I think that is the key. The easiest way to stay consistent with your content, whether you're writing, whether you're talking on video, whether you're, it doesn't matter. The easiest way to stay consistent is to be your authentic self. And then if you stay your authentic self, it's easy to stay consistent. And then because of the way algorithms work, the right people will find you and they will stick and it will then learn that it being the algorithms or what have you, how to attract more of those similar type of people. So that's just some really, really good advice. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll, I'm more than that. People like you can have a website that, uh, you know, we see people playing games and showing how they play and analyze it as they play. This is like, and some of them are very successful making money and they, the their blog post is just a, uh, actual video with a few texts like i said people not everyone will connect to you you or me that's it some people will to our way that we work some people love when people sell sell some people really connect i remember i went to a conference and they said there's no there are no pitches on stage and i was actually bummed i say why because i said you know how much can you learn from someone selling on stage this is like the Biggest art ever after webinars to sell because you have the on stage is a little bit more fear than on webinar. But I said it's 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 just it doesn't fit for everyone. Not everyone likes people to sell, and not everyone like your style or this style or, or whatever style. But some people will love the style of what you write, it, and it will be not only easier for you to to build the content, you'll be also having fun. It's when it's not fun, let's be honest, you don't want to do that it's boring, right? When it's boring, we won't do it like any other job. So people ask me, so do you like uh, all the 2000 websites or the websites you build? Do you like it? No, but you know what I like? I like the factory. Right. I, 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 I'm, I'm excited about the process, not specific about the content because it's not a website that actually uh, uh, related to everything to me, but we're writing it very simple, but still, I'm excited about the process, so that's why we build it, and that's why I'm happy. Otherwise, I would have already stopped. And same goes to the conference. I would stop the conference if I didn't have fun. As long as I have fun, 
I will do it. Whenever you don't want to have fun, don't do that. It, it, it will be awful. Yeah. Um, one last question. I know we're getting almost close to the time. Um, from your experience, what are like the best three best niches from building blogs? For writing blogs? For writing blogs. I mean, the, I, I guess what I'm asking is which are the niches that have coming more income for you? That's what I'm asking. So first of all, uh, okay, you're asking about me, but I'll, I'll answer in general. Whatever is for me, it doesn't necessarily relevant to others. I would say select the ones that are enjoyable for you. If you like to travel, do a blog about traveling, right? Because if I if, if I tell you, let, that's the thing. You remember I told you, you look at others. So let's say I'm a health, you know, I love health. And you know, I try. I eat very healthy. I do, and 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 I have a very successful uh, health blog. And you say, you know what? I don't care about health, but I'll write one. I say, don't do that. Don't do that. Absolutely, don't do that. It won't stick unless you are business oriented. And most people are not. They're eventually connected to what's inside, and they're not. They go to an affiliate program conference, and they let everyone drink their whatever, green juice, and then you, you don't want to drink it because you're not even a healthy guy. So I'm just saying, don't do that. Uh, for us, if you look at the verticals, I can't really tell you, and I'll tell you why. Because we have over 2,000 websites in maybe 70 different niches, verticals. Each one has its advantage and disadvantage. I would say one thing. Some, some verticals have... Uh, more value in terms of traffic and products. So health, for in, for example, obviously has more uh, advertiser, more people. And health, it doesn't just say juices or programs. It could be, uh, you know, beauty. Like under under health, I'm putting beauty, like surgeries, beauty, sur whatever it is. So this is a huge niche with money. Um, all the world of vehicles, insurance, and again, I'm connected the two just car insurance, but vehicles, these are industries that have lots of money. So you can definitely, so if you like, and in, if you tell me uh, that you what you love is poetry, I'm not saying you cannot make money, but I don't know any affiliate program about poetry. Maybe you can sell ebook books, whatever it is, but it's not really... Right, affiliate people who want to be affiliates are not in for the chop chain. Okay, uh, chip chain. They want big money. So I'm just saying go to, but these uh, verticals are more competitive. So find, even with these ones, find verticals. By the way, just to summarize, like I said, we're in that. So I know that there's a big uh, a vertical, which people don't know, which is uh, chicken coops. How to build chicken coops and how to raise chickens. It sounds like stupid, but this is a multi million uh, vertical. So you can do that. Again, if you like it and if you actually build one, you can figure out there's so many interesting things and go for, and I would say find a niche within the niche because the niches are so big. Health is too general, right? So find something that you're more connected. It could be fitness. It could be reviews of product. Reviews, reviews, of, reviews of product is very easy for everyone, right? Because you review products and uh, review a product and then you can actually re recommend it and have an affiliate link. And you can tell people, listen, yes, I'm getting, if you buy, I do get it, but my review is authentic because I actually tried it. Here it is. You know, all the guys that do open the box, you order something, how do you call it? Uh, uh, unboxing. Box unboxing. 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 Cool thing. When I saw it, I said, oh, that's a great model, right? For kids, for whatever it is. Find a niche. Even in, in a niche, find, yeah, people do it for electronics, but you can do it for any niche, right? Unboxing. So cool. So find things that are simple for you. If you want to go the route of, of, of more connecting to people and actually do webinars, even unboxing could be a webinar. Some people that do unboxing have the videos telling you about the new TV, and they get the TV for free just to unbox, right? They build themselves a rapport, and they're now connecting to a brand, their own brand. So you can do whatever you want. It's so exciting. It's just you need to decide how far you want to take it. And you have to be prepared to take it all the way, I think is the main lesson there. So that, uh, you know really highlights the importance of doing something that that you're going to enjoy whether it's the products or whether like you say the factory or the process you really have to be able to enjoy the process uh, i do want to thank you for your time Atai. i do have one more question which i'll get to in just a second here uh, you mentioned your morning dough newsletter 
uh, where Doe is spelled D-O-U-G-H dot com. We'll go ahead and link that down anywhere that you're watching this. Uh, also, the DMI Expo, uh, which is your in-person event, which we'll link down in your, your own personal website as well, which we'll link down either in the comments or the show notes, depending on where you're watching this. Uh, it's important to uh, think about that because I think people can get a lot of value just by simply not only listening to what you're saying, but diving into what you're doing by analyzing what you're doing. I think people can stand to learn a lot. So really do appreciate your time coming on the show. The last question I have for you, Itai, is do you have any questions for us? We like to turn it around and show our appreciation by allowing you to, if you want, ask us anything. And if not, uh, that's fine as well. First of all, thank you for having me and your great host and I appreciate that and hopefully I was able to share uh, with your audience information that can help them um, I think I'll tell I'll, I'll ask you something that I'm asking myself uh, because you're already, already a little bit not a little bit you're in more advanced stage but w- there are two things that I'm always looking for so someone says that Google is not working Google knows that in the next 12 months it still has his business and maybe 24 months they're already working on what will happen in seven or ten years and I'm asking myself and then I'm asking you and there's not necessarily an answer but what will happen for you where will you be in 10 years because now as we said we're playing for the long term we want to have something that keep on going and not changing the business all that it's double but we don't want to we're getting all this right we guys the more the people that are already doing it many years do we don't want to change the business when we were 20. Oh, you're an affiliate. You can change every day. So my question is, how do you see yourself? What are your plans to be there and be relevant in seven, eight, ten years? Yeah, so I'll go for ahead and start uh, then and I'll let, oh, go ahead, Andrea. I'll let you go and then I, I'll, I'll finish this up. Yeah, here. you can think in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for me, uh, right now, like how Brian mentioned, I am creating my own program in Spanish, you know, to help the Hispanic community uh, learn this whole online business stuff because I recently came back from Peru and they didn't know anything that I was doing basically here. So then that's what I want to do for the future. And then I also want to do more coaching as well. I want to keep it Spanish, Spanish version, and I do want to create events at, at some point as well. So have people fly out and go to a marketing event that hopefully I'll be the host and just go with that route and then see where everything takes me from there. Love it. And for me, I think it's all about leverage, not in an evil, you know, I want to make $1 billion type of way, but leverage is where can we get attention, interest, and action. So I think if I'm looking not over the next two or three years, but if I'm looking over the next, I'm 42 and God willing, I have another 40 40 years or so, maybe a little bit more on this earth. I want to still be in this space. And for me, what I'm focused on long-term is leadership. And, And that's where things can shift, but I still provide myself with opportunities because I always say, if we're selling digital products like Andre and myself are, and you might even, and some of your verticals be selling, you know, information products as well. You know, we're really not in the information business. We're, we're in the leadership business. So I think if I can continue to advance my knowledge and my willingness to pay my rent on this earth through service, then I think, everything will work out in the long run. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate you both uh, uh, the answer. Thank you. And thank you for having me. It was amazing. And, uh, uh, you know, keep on doing your great, whatever you do, it's amazing helping people. uh, um, So thank you guys. All right. Well, thanks again. And we'll see everybody on the next episode of Evolved Marketing Podcast.